Hello, everybody! My name is Python, and welcome back to another episode here of the Terraria Let's Play. Thank you, as always, for all of the lovely support you guys have been showing this series so far. Last episode reached over 1,300 likes, which is fantastic. Now, of course, if you do want to continue supporting the series, by far the easiest and best way to do so is simply to drop a like on the video. But, of course, if you do want to go one further, use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs. So, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Mercer, the traveling a merchant. We have ourselves quite a lot of stuff going on here, guys. We've got ourselves a mysterious cape. We've got ourselves the stopwatch. A pretty cool painting here. And you know what? I'm kind of feeling like what we should do is buy every single one of those things. So yeah, we got ourselves a bunch of money just casually laying on the floor. A little bit of money inside of our chest here as well. And yeah, guys, I'm excited to see about buying some stuffs. Oh, shit. Snappers. All right, so here we go. Let's get ourselves the cape because I love capes. We're going to get ourselves a stopwatch because we need to make a start on collecting all of the informational accessories for the eventual cell phone. We got ourselves this painting here, which is absolutely whopping ginormous, apparently. And finally, of course, if we really wanted to, we could also go ahead and buy ourselves some uh, dynasty wood here with some of these here shingles. Ooh, I mean, I did kind of want to do a little bit of building in today's episode, so how's about we go ahead and buy a bunch of this stuff? So one full stack will basically cost us about five gold coins. So if I was to go ahead and buy 500 of each of these here shingle roofs, then we should just about be out of money. So there's the blue shingles. There we go. Look at that. We got ourselves some cool building resources. Huh. Turns out I actually had another gold coin just laying on the floor. So uh, yeah, we'll buy a little bit more. Oh yeah, I'm a super rich guy now, my friendos. We can now go ahead and stock up the almighty amount of copper coins that we have in our world. Look at that. I mean, quite literally, this has become the most rich room in the entire house, even though it is just copper coins. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's so dumb, isn't it? I'm so poor now. So if you guys can't tell already, since the last episode, I've done a whole bunch of landscaping work. I've got a nicely lit area and a nice amount of flat landscape to build in. So yeah, and it's not like entirely flat either. There are some slopes here and there just to give it a little bit of height variation. But for the most part, it's flat enough to the point where we can build a good amount of stuff on it. So I think the first thing I'd like to do is to make a a little bit of a house here for the angler and for us to be able to do a little bit of fishing inside of this here forested lake. So here's what we're going to go and do. We're going to use this here dynasty wood and we're going to have ourselves a whopping great time with it. So let's make ourselves a little bit of a platform and of course we'll use the shingles for a little bit of a roof as well. And yeah, we should have ourselves a pretty nice looking thing by the end of this. Now here's the thing. We need to try to think about how exactly it is we're going to be able to safely fish from the inside of this house here and, you know, not risk getting happened upon by a bunch of, I don't know, blood moon enemies, nighttime enemies, all that kind of stuff. It's stuff we need to think about, isn't it? Alrighty, my friends. So here's what I'm going to try and do. I am going to attempt to pull off some sort of oriental slash Japanese style roof on this building. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like that kind of style comes naturally to anyone who's using the dynasty wood and shingles here. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have ourselves a nice, tall, pointed roof, and then maybe some sort of little bits at the edge here that go up, and then we do a little bit of smoothy smooth action, and we should have something that looks kind of decent. All right, so what are we thinking, guys? Is this a good enough oriental-style roof for this house? I mean, I think it's kind of all right. I didn't even use any reference images or anything like that. I just sort of pulled it out of my own imagination. So yeah, do you know what? For something that's been plucked out of my mind, I do not think we've done a bad job here, ladies and gentlemen. All we got to do is sort of fill out the interior, get some walls in, all that kind of good stuff. You guys know how to build houses at this point. I won't insult to your intelligence. You want to know another thing that's good about the dynasty set? We can go ahead and make all of this dynasty stuff here. Look at that. We can make dynasty lamps and all sorts 
sorts of other beautiful stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty chuffed about this actually. Uh, so let's get ourselves a lantern. I can go right up in the center there. Uh, oh, look at that. We've got some banners as well that we can start to populate this place with. Hey, oh, very cool. Uh, Dynasty large candle. Uh, oh. Yeah, okay, sure. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. All right, and then we've got a dynasty chair. Very nice. And then we've got like a little sort of spot here as well. Oh, do you know what? I know exactly what to put there. A cooking pot. Right, remind me. Oh, that's literally it. Two bits of wood and then iron bars. And that's it. We have cooking pot. So we'll take ourselves a bunch of chests as well. And there's going to be four chests inside of the angler's hut. And I already have what I'm going to put in them worked out as well. There we are. Fishing gear, fishing yield, pirate drops, and gold furniture. Fantastic. Got it all sorted out and nicely organized, eh? I like it when things are nicely organized. Oh, yes. It makes me feel good about myself. Oh, yeah. That's right. I always forget about this, don't I? The fact that you can upgrade the regular maze up to a flaming maze with the usage of 99 torches. So, yep. There we go. It's just a default one, but hey-ho. We can go ahead and light people on fire now. All right, little angler i'm nearly there with your brand new house there buddy don't worry you're not going to be waiting for that much longer so yeah let's get this house finished off with some nice background walls here and there we go we will just about have this thing done yeah how about it huh our little oriental style house is just about up and running so let's get the angler in here and yeah there we have it we have a proper house for him finally. However, we still haven't thought about how exactly we're going to make this into a nice safe fishing space when it comes to nighttime or blood moons. Hmm. I don't honestly know. I mean, I could try to go underground, but then we just wind up flooding it. Uh... I don't know, man. Maybe eventually I need to do something with, like, actuators or something so we can, like, poof into existence a bunch of blocks and that will block everybody off or something. Ah! Uh, I don't know, man. One thing I do know is we should probably go ahead and put one of these bad boys down. Let's put down a gnome. There we are. And that should give us a little bit better fishing luck, right? That's how they work. And check it out as well. Just because I can, we've got ourselves a painting here. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Do you know what? Since we do have the fishing hut done, how's about we go ahead and do a quest here? We've got the infected scabbard fish to get from the corruption. Oh, snappers. That means going way over here. Ah. But we don't have a corruptified lake. Well, that's a bunch of balls, isn't it? Ah, darn it. All right, well, it actually turns out we can't do that fishing quest. What we can do, though, ladies and gentlemen, is increase our fishing power by threefold and do a little bit of fishing. Because why the heck not, man? I mean, we've got to put this little lake to the test, right? We've got to make sure that it is only fish and good stuff we can get out of it rather than junk. So let's see. There we are. There's a little bit of bass right there. Very nice. Some more bass. Oh, no! We are capturing junk out of here. Well, that's not very cool, is it? Right, as far as I can remember, I believe you need 300 blocks of water for a lake to no longer get you junk. So clearly, there's less than 300 blocks worth of water here. All right, as far as I can remember, this is all you have to do to make a water generator. Uh, yeah, this literally is it. <laughs> Oh, I do love exploiting weird mechanics in Terraria. It does make me happy. So yeah, by doing this, I'm hoping we'll be able to get ourselves enough water blocks inside of this lake here to grant us the ability to no longer capture junk out of this lake here. So yeah, all right. I think that's just about enough. So with the biggest area of water here, we've got 22 times 11, which is... Uh, Quite a lot, actually. That is going to be, what, 242, I think, maybe? So, I think we've got enough water here now for us to never capture junk again. I think we've done the job. All right, guys, so now this lake should be more than big enough for us to no longer capture junk. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy about this. We now have a big old lake to do a little bit of fishing from. Maybe we get some crates every now and again. That'd be kind of nice, huh? Ah, I just realized if we've got a cooking pot down here and a fishing yield chest here, doesn't that mean I won't be able to make stuff? Oh, oh, never mind. Okay, apparently I can still use my cooking pot even from this platform here. 
That's a little bit peculiar, but you know what? I'm not going to complain about it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, a nice little supply of buffs. Cool. And because this is master mode, the buffs are probably going to come in quite clutch as well. Yeah, there you are, Jay. Enjoy your new house there, broski. It'd be kind of nice if we had ourselves like a little something something over this side of the lake as well. But the question is... What? You see, originally, I was thinking maybe we could plant a tree or two underneath here, but I'm pretty sure you need 16 vertical blocks of free space in order for a tree to grow, and, well, a quick little count will tell us that there's only 14 blocks here. So, I don't know, man. I want to make this place look good at the end of the day. That's what I want to try and do. I want to be proud of the things that I'm doing in this world, all right? All right, real quick, we've got 23 mana stars. We could go ahead and do a little bit of this. There we are. 100 mana is now the amount we have. Okay, we're halfway up to the default maximum of 200. So that's pretty cool, right? Alrighty. So I've just got ahead and beefed up this place a little bit with some uh, fences here. We've got ourselves some lamps. And I decided to go ahead and put in some little living leaf wall uh, things here. They don't really have any kind of roots just yet, though. Like, maybe I could root them to the ground down here. But, I don't know. Then again, it looks kind of cool as it is, to be honest with you. <laughs> Holy fireflies! Oh, was times like this, I really wish I had a bug net, but we don't have a merchant just yet. Oh, goodness me. We're going to pick these things up, and then we've got a near-infinite ability to fish. Good lord, look at them there everywhere. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to make myself a little fishing house, and a bunny just decided to move in. Oh, goodness me. Oh, well, you do you, buddy. You do you. You think I care? Oh, goodness me. I really don't. So, yeah, there you go. How about it, my friends? A little microscopic fishing hut. <laughs> Now, obviously, as time goes by, what we're going to wind up doing is using actuators here instead of a door. And that should mean that we have ourselves a nice safe haven when it comes to fishing. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it really is tiny, though, isn't it? It's so cute. Hey, that's a little bit more obtainable. The humble bonefish. Caught in the underground layer and caverns. Should be fairly simple. We've only got one piece of bait, though, which isn't a lot is it so i don't know maybe we get super lucky but i don't know i don't really hold out too much hope if i'm being honest with you guys and unfortunately because we don't have a merchant and therefore no bug net ah uh, yeah getting more bait is easier said than done oh hell yeah dude that's a lot of money okay seven gold coins not bad huh Thanks for that, Terraria. I appreciate that. Holy sapphires. That's that's a lot of sapphires, guys. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. All right, check it out, my friends. I think I found a nice large lake in which to do some underground fishing. So, like I say... We gotta get lucky here, like very, very lucky indeed, in fact. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how this goes, huh? Oh, hey! Look at the bottom left there, my friends. A fairy is trying to tell me that there's a heart crystal to my bottom left. Well, okay, here I am trying to combine two water bodies together to do even better fishing. And there he is trying to distract me with the lure of a heart crystal. Well, okay then. <laughs> I best go get it, huh? Thank you very much indeed. That is now 300 health we are at on only episode three. Very cool. All right, let's see if we get lucky here, huh? The bonefish is what we are needing. Please don't snap the line. That's actually really not appreciated. And again, it snapped the line. Well, why don't you go ahead and screw yourself, you stupid line? Uh, that's a bass. Come on, come on. Bonefish. No, that's a... Ah, darn it. That was the last bit of bait. Ah, you hate to see it. You know what? All of this is just telling me that I really need to make a house for the merchant. So, do you know what? I think that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So, let's grab out our building materials again. And let's just get right on with it, eh? We do what needs to be done, ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Well, as you can see, we have ourselves yet another house added to our repertoire here. So, all is looking well, my friend. All is looking well. We have a nice little settlement emerging here. 
And I gotta tell you, I think it is looking mighty dang fine. I really, really like this little bridge we got going on with the lake. I really like the fact that we've got ourselves some clay pots with some herbs growing in there as well. So not only do they look nice, but they are functionally cool as well in that we're growing herbs early on, which is awesome. All right, so all that's left to do is to wait for the merchant to hopefully spawn in. Hopefully it's not going to be the nurse or anyone else who spawns in instead, because, you know, that'd be kind of less than ideal, wouldn't it? So so yeah, let's get the coins in our inventory ready. And yeah, that should be enough to fill the criteria of having 50 silver in your inventory for the merchant to spawn. So I'm hoping that's the case anyway. I'm hoping the merchant will be the next one to spawn in. All right, well, daytime is here. Now we've just got to wait to see which NPC spawns in. Come on, let it be the merchant. That's what we're looking for. The good old humble merchant. Oh, and for any of you guys interested, we simply go in the door here. I've got like a one and a half block space here, which allows me to chuck the fishing line through it, which is fantastic. I mean, yeah, strictly speaking, I could go ahead and sort of close this up a little bit more and only have a one block gap. But yeah, it could be a little bit more finicky trying to aim your line through the space. Although then again, strictly speaking, it would be more safe, wouldn't it? You know, the less amount of space we have for the guys to get through, the better things are going to be for our safety, huh? Eh, I don't know. I mean, it's not actually that difficult to get the line through here, so... Maybe we keep it as only a one block gap. Eh, why not? It works. Oh, look at that. Our first ever bit of day bloom has actually bloomed. Cool. Thanks, buddy. So as time goes on, we can periodically harvest a nice basic level of potion ingredients here, which I think is pretty awesome. At the end of the day, the earlier we get a supply of potion ingredients, the better things are going to be later down the line when we want to be creating buff potions to take on invasions and bosses. Hey, it is indeed the merchant who spawns in. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that, buddy. All right, so check it out. We can get ourselves the uh, forest uh, pylon if we wanted to. We can get ourselves a piggy bank and, of course, the bug net. And because this guy is happy, he's also offering us these items with a little bit of a discount, which is absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for that as well, bud. All right, question. Can we scrape up enough money to the point where we can get ourselves that pylon. Because again, the earlier we get started on a pylon network, the better things are going to be. I mean, look at this. We've got a sapphire hook. We don't need it. We can sell it. Same with the fishing pole. And even the broadsword here. All right, but ski, here you go. How about a bunch of items, eh? You're going to be needing them for your future selling ventures. Anyway, here we go. Ten gold coins. Fantastic. So, let's go ahead and see what we can get here. There's the forest pylon. On. There's the bug net. Uh, the sickle? Uh, uh, yeah? Okay, sure. I kind of like that. I'm also going to buy myself a whole bunch of torches here because, you know, why wouldn't I? There we go. Ha-ha! Fantastic! All right, guys, we're just about done with the episode. Fantastic! Before we head off, though, we do have the comment of the day and also the forest pylon to place down, so let's get them done. So we've got I am Tick who says, Hey, Python, are you thinking of doing a journey mode let's play in the future or any class-specific playthroughs like Ranger or Mage for 1.4? Yes, is the simple answer to that. But of course, we've already got two series going on at once, so we are not going to be starting any series anytime soon. However, one of the more immediate ideas I did have when I had my Python's Rub series going was doing a 10 times spawn rate master mode playthrough, just to really punish myself, you know? But yeah, class-specific playthroughs are definitely something I would like to try and get back to at some point. It has been a very, very long time indeed since we have completed a class-specific playthrough. So yeah, I think it's time we change that. But unfortunately, it's not going to be anytime soon. Oh yeah, we now have only two copper coins left to our name. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that, that's that's a bit poor, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? That is a bit poor. Ah, well, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, we got everything we wanted to get done 
done. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. So yeah, guys, it's time to wrap up the episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode and the nice little things we built in today's episode, please do be sure, of course, to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. Of course, any feedback and suggestions regarding the builds we've done today, they're always welcome in the comments area down below. So any thoughts, go ahead, hash it down in the comment. But for now, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.